Thanks for tuning in. I'm Michael Watson, and this is the Influence Watch podcast. In this episode, Speaker Nancy Pelosi invites a special interest supporter into her box for the State of the Union. The environmentalist movement issues its Green New Deal wish list. And two of our stories from last week explode into even greater controversy. First, we follow up from last week. When Planned Parenthood, NARAL, and other pro-choice groups proposed a radical expansion of late-term abortions in Virginia, they could not have imagined how terribly their experiment in Overton window shifting would go. The Overton window is a concept credited to the late Mackinac Institute scholar Joseph Overton, which refers to the boundaries of politically plausible policies. Meanwhile, the corruption investigation into Philadelphia's local of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Union reportedly involves family member number four, better known as State Supreme Court Justice Kevin Doherty, brother of indicted union boss Johnny Dock. The New York Post said it best, Virginia is for losers. In the two weeks since State Delegate Kathy Tran introduced a bill removing almost all limits on late-term abortion, the controversy has metastasized into a full-blown omnishambles. First, a right-wing website published a yearbook photo from Governor Ralph Northam's page showing a man in blackface standing next to a person in a KKK hood. Northam initially conceded to being one or the other of the people in racist costume, but later retracted his confession while admitting to appearing in blackface as part of a Michael Jackson routine. The Washington Post reported that the right-wing website said that it was tipped off to the photo's existence by a medical school classmate of Northam's, who was outraged by Northam's apparently infanticide-endorsing comments we discussed on last week's show. Then, after every major Democrat in the state called on Northam to quit, it emerged that Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax, himself a former board member of the Metropolitan Washington branch of Planned Parenthood's advocacy wing, had been accused of sexual assault, a charge he denies. His accuser said that she restated her charges— which she says she had brought to the attention of the Washington Post when she became aware Fairfax was running for lieutenant governor, after it appeared Fairfax might ascend to the governorship. Then, after Fairfax denials, it it emerged that Virginia Attorney General Mark Herring, who had called on Northam to resign, had also appeared in blackface. Planned Parenthood spent heavily on the statewide officials now caught in scandal and endorsed the Tran bill that provoked the omni-shambles. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, the labor union corruption scandal involving IBEW Local 98 might be expanding. The brother of Johnny Doc Doherty, business manager of the union and alleged crime boss, is State Supreme Court Kevin Doherty, elected to the court in 2015 with over $1.5 million in support from his brother's union. Now the Philadelphia Inquirer reports that Justice Doherty is known by a different appellation at the federal grand jury, family member number four. The Inquirer reports, quote, Prosecutors allege family member number four received contracting work on his home in northeast Philadelphia and snow removal services one day in 2016 on the union's dime. Justice Doherty did not report receiving any benefits from his brother or the union on his annual financial disclosure forms. Justice Doherty denies wrongdoing, and prosecutors have not charged him. On Thursday, environmentalist-aligned members of Congress released their wish list for a Green New Deal. Inside was a public works boondoggle and massive payoff to organized labor couched in environmentalist dogma, unachievable ambition, and bad copy editing. An FAQ document on the plan suggested that the plan would be paid for by, quote, extending credit to power these projects, and some old-fashioned government owning the means of production socialism. Quote, space for the government to take an equity stake in projects to get a return on investment, close quote. So, what are the provisions of the Green New Deal? First, quote, meet 100% of power demand through clean and renewable energy sources, but no nuclear energy, because, quote, the plan is to transition off of nuclear and all fossil fuels as soon as possible, close quote. The plan supporters hope to, quote, upgrade or replace every building in the U.S. for state-of-the-art energy efficiency, close quote, which sounds expensive, and I'm pretty sure a lot of big construction machines run on combustion engines. They hope to, quote, massively expand clean manufacturing like solar panel factories, wind turbine factories, battery and storage manufacturing, energy efficient manufacturing components, and remove pollution and greenhouse gas emissions from manufacturing. Call it the environmentalist version of the class president calling for free soda and all the vending machines. They hope to, quote, work with farmers and ranchers to create a sustainable pollution and greenhouse gas free food system that ensures universal access to healthy food and expands independent family farming which is actually PR speak for an honest-to-God ban on animal agriculture and eating meat. The document elsewhere expresses hope, quote, to fully get rid of farting cows. The plan's proponents also hope to, quote, totally overhaul transportation 
by massively expanding electric vehicle manufacturing, build charging stations everywhere, build out high-speed rail at a scale where air travel stops becoming necessary, create affordable public transit available to all, with goal to replace every combustion engine vehicle. In short, a ban on air travel, which would be replaced with trains that are half as fast at best, and a ban on cars for anyone without the $42,900 for a base model Tesla. But wait, there's more! Because a hilariously extreme environmentalist wish list isn't enough, there are payoffs to labor unions and other intersectional interest groups. The plan calls for, quote, massive federal investments and assistance to organizations and businesses participating in the Green New Deal and ensuring the public gets a return on that investment. The document explicitly calls for a boondoggle and socialism at the same time. The plan's proponents say they will, quote, provide job training and education to all, close quote, presumably to get the teachers' union on board. The Green New Deal would, quote, doing direct investments in frontline and deindustrialized communities that would otherwise be hurt by the transition to prioritize economic benefits there, close quote, which sounds like telling Kentuckians and West Virginians learn to code, but without the danger of a Twitter ban. The plan, quote, would protect right of all workers to unionize and organize. Again, just like the original New Deal, the proponents want to make union coercion of workers and disruptive strike action easier. The plan's proponents would, quote, enact and enforce trade rules to stop the transfer of jobs and pollution overseas and grow domestic manufacturing, which makes the politically homeless free traders, a growing majority of the country, according to opinion polls, weep uncontrollably. And the plan finally promises, quote, economic security for all who are unable or unwilling to work. The unable I'll grant, but the unwilling? I guess we kulaks will just have to work with more staccanovite fervor. And in our final item, I have an op-ed in today's Washington Examiner totaling up the bill for Planned Parenthood President Leanna Wen's seat in Nancy Pelosi's box at the State of the Union address. According to Open Secrets, independent expenditure, you might know them as Dark Money Citizens United committees, affiliated with Planned Parenthood, spent $6.5 million backing Pelosi's bid to take over the House and Chuck Schumer's allies in the Senate. Top recipient of Planned Parenthood support didn't even get into Congress. Democracy Alliance member and centimillionaire liberal donor Scott Wallace, whose opponent Representative Brian Fitzpatrick shugged off $1.85 million in a tax from Planned Parenthood, was not elected. But others made it. Representatives Antonio Delgado of New York, Sean Kasten of Illinois, Angie Craig of Minnesota, and Dean Phillips of Minnesota, each were supported by six-figure expenditures targeting their rivals or supporting their own efforts. Interestingly, one of Pelosi's own caucus members was a target of Planned Parenthood. Representative Dan Lipinski, a Chicago Democrat, endured over $100,000 in attacks from the Planned Parenthood Action Fund, attacking him in the primary election for his opposition to abortion. For his part, Lipinski celebrated his political survival by speaking to the 2019 March for Life. At stake for Planned Parenthood is upwards of $560 million of federal funding for its network, and the possibility of expanding the scope of abortion law, like it tried in Virginia, something that has surely never backfired for the organization. That's our show for this week. If you're listening to this on YouTube, we encourage you to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher. And if you have subscribed, thank you. And please leave us a five-star rating. We'll see you next week.